Hello, I'm Bill Harris, and welcome to Life Questions, a program that looks at life's issues from a biblical perspective. And speaking about life, there's so much going on in today's world today, providing us with much to talk about. As always, we are joined by a guest panel of local ministers, and I would like to introduce them to you as we glean from their wisdom today. First, we have with us Pastor Jim Lewis of the New Life Christian Ministries in Lima, Ohio, followed by Pastor Darwin Dunton of Mount Tabor Church of God of uh, Salina, Ohio, then Pastor Craig Flack of Salina First Church of God, and rounding off our panel today is Pastor Jason Goss of Wapakoneta Family Worship Center. We are happy to have you all with us today, gentlemen. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. As we begin our discussion, let's look quickly into the letters that we've been getting from our viewers. And this one seems to be the essence of a lot of people in our country this day and time. It says, the viewer says, I really don't like the choices we have to vote for in November. Is it wrong not to vote? Wow. Is it wrong not to vote? Pastor Goss? I, I, I think the Jason? challenge we have here is a lot of times we associate our vote with a party or with a person. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to change that mentality that we're voting for values. So at every convention that happens, the uh, parties all say, this is our values, which our uh, <clears throat> party members are going to stand by. These are the things sure. we believe. So I actually went to the party platforms and looked it up, and so topics like abortion. Uh, the Republican Party has said, we assert the sanctity of human life and affirm that an unborn child has a fundamental right to life which cannot be infringed. They will appoint judges who support the sanctity of life in all stages. They oppose public funds to perform or promote abortions. That's from pages 13 and 14 on their platform. Mm -hmm. The Democratic Party has said they commit to protecting advanced reproductive health rights and justice so that every woman should be able, able to access high quality re reproductive health care services, including safe and legal abortion. So depending on where you stand on that issue, yes. you are voting a value. And you may not like the candidate that that party presents, but in essence, for the next four years, those values are going to be promoted and even instituted in our laws. And I think we need to uh, um, understand that. And that even goes to when you go to marriage and family, uh, when it goes to education, support for Israel, climate change, religious freedom, all of those issues each party addressed. And so, for example, we've got a Supreme Court nomination coming up. Very important. And so yeah. the party that we voted for four years ago is now kind mm -hmm. of setting the tone for the next several decades, probably. Yeah. Uh -huh. So don't think I'm voting for a person. Don't think I'm voting for a party. I'm voting for values which that party, whoever gets voted in, is going to be kind of putting our country on track for the next several years. Yeah. Very good answer. Go right ahead, Pastor. I think uh, the, the question is, is it a sin not to vote? And the answer is no, it's not a sin not to vote. I don't see anywhere in scriptures that says, if you, thou shalt not vote, thou shalt go to hell. I don't see that. <laughs> However, uh, let's go back to the year 2000. Okay. And uh, Bush versus Gore. That election was decided by uh, 537 votes. Get, put that in perspective. Uh, some of the towns that are actually in the viewing area are smaller or bigger than uh -huh. uh, 537 votes. Uh -huh. Craig Flax and I's churches together would be 537 votes in, in, in the whole nation because Florida is what decided that election. Because uh, the Chad votes, let's remind the people yeah, of what happened. The, the hanging the, the, the Chad, you know, you know, magnifying glasses <laughs> and everything else that they were doing. So don't think that your vote doesn't matter. It right. does. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't have a clue how this election's going to go. But if it goes down to like it was in, in 2000, uh, does your vote matter? It sure does. Mm -hmm. and, and I agree with you on everything. Uh, you should always uh, know what you're voting for, and you should always know what their beliefs are. Right. Uh, yeah, that, that takes us into some of the social issues because you would get another argument that would say, well, there are other social values that you didn't mention that are being left out there. Uh, the Black Lives Matter movement is one where people talk about African-American men particularly and women that are being targeted by certain police officers. And the argument that says that while we're not against police officers, police should be about the business of 
weeding out those bad seeds they have within their own ranks. Right. Because we want protection of our neighborhoods and we want police officers. And that murder, murder is also a value yeah. that we have to deal with. How do you come back on that one? I think it's, uh, again, you have to, if you're going back to looking at voting, it's what, do, what are your values and what do you think is actually going to institute change? Mm -hmm. um, one thing I think that people just talk a lot in election years <laughs> and, and they just got to fill the airtime. And, and so <laughs> you sometimes have to try and cut through what are they saying versus what are they trying to do? Mm -hmm. I laughed. Uh, uh, Reverend Al Sharpton was on uh, MSNBC, and he is someone who ran on the Rainbow Coalition Party. I mean, ran for president, and then has been long associated with the Democratic Party. And, and he said something along the lines of, uh, folks where I come from don't want no police in the neighborhood. Because last week I did a funeral for a one-year-old. It's a dangerous place to live that was killed in a stray bullet uh -huh, drive-by. Uh -huh. We need police. And yes. I thought, well, that's not a... Uh, an opinion that you hear all that much. So sometimes mm -hmm. you have to cut through some people just wanting to talk yeah. and, and, and get to that. But I do think that's where, why people feel conflicted to go back to our question. I, I don't like the candidates. I feel torn on each side. Right. And if you probably feel like you don't have a home, you're probably in the right spot because Christ isn't on the ballot right. this fall. Yeah. And we can get as close as we maybe hopefully can, but there's going to be glaring deficiencies yeah, because yeah. man made it. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's where they're going to come up to that struggle of, hey, I value the Black Lives Matter movement, but I also value uh, uh, abortion rights right. or Second mm -hmm. Amendment rights. And, and there's no party that represents. Yeah, so yeah. they're going to struggle with that. Right. And then I want to caution you, too, that, that if you look at the Black Lives Matter movement, you will see that while it, 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 it up front is standing for um, the protection of black males, particularly, but all black lives, that when you go to their website to look beyond that, you will see that they are taking a stand yeah. in favor of abortion. Right. They are taking a stand in favor of homosexual rights and the like, which you, one could argue have nothing to do with Black Lives Matter. Right. right. So it I, becomes I, very complex there, that's, doesn't it? That's yeah. the challenge is... is do Black Lives Matter absolutely 100% racism is a sin? And, but then when you go to the organization, I think that's the problem a lot of people have is there's a separation of the organization mm -hmm. versus the truth of the statement. Right. And so, uh, matter of fact, the, the organization talked about on their website, um, you can find it on the internet. They've taken it down now because they've gotten heat from it but they've talked about how their goal was the destruction of the modern family. Yes. And yes. They, that, was, that was promoted on their website. Their, yes, it was. their founders and their organizers are, and they blatantly say that they are favor, they are Marxists, and they say that. They, so they have a desire to deconstruct what is America mm -hmm. um, well, as an organization. Yeah. So yeah. I think we need to understand that. And that's, I think many churches, pastors, Christians have fallen in that, well, I don't necessarily believe in the organization, but I don't necessarily disagree with the truth. Where do I stand? Yeah. Because if, if I say one thing, immediately I'm associated with the other. Yes, yes. And that's been a very difficult spot. It's to very be in. murky, isn't it? Yeah. Very, very murky. You have to look <clears throat> at what the organization believes, because I know we're kind of going down just a little bit. And um, here, here it is, because <laughs> I actually downloaded it. Yeah. And, and uh, we affirm the lives. I mean, this is Black Lives Matter. Uh, second state, second paragraph. We affirm the lives of black, queer, and trans folks, disabled folks, undocumented folks, folks uh, uh, with records, women, all black lives along the gender spectrum in our networks of those who have been marginalized with the black liberation movement. I'm going, what does this have to do with police? What, is, mm. what does this have to do with, uh, you know... Right. <laughs> with 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 African Americans, mm -hmm. except for, I mean, you go to Portland, you go to uh, Seattle. What do you see in the streets? Do you see the raised black fist? No, you see the rainbow flag. I mean, it's been taken over. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And and so, for that standpoint, I can't support that group. Yeah. However. Uh, do people have a right to live? Yes. Do ha people have a right to uh, uh, not be discriminated against? Definitely, we don't. We have the right not to be. And so, there's a lot of things there that I think on the outward, yeah, I support. 
I mean, uh, is there a, is there a loud outcry? Do you think from whites in support of Black Lives? Do you think? Do, 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 do you I, think I, we, I have seen uh, people that we talk, uh, they're like, yes, we agree that black lives matter. Do we have a uh, maybe an institutional problem with our polices or improper training? Yeah, there's there's some mm -hmm. issues that we have to address. Mm -hmm. But I think the the issue that a lot of people said, let's not tear the whole system down. It's mm -hmm. not the whole system isn't bad. Yeah, we have bad apples. We have yeah. some bad programs. Don't we had some bad policy. Don't throw the baby out with the bathroom. Exactly. That's that's where we're. <clears throat> and I think when you're in the middle, I think a lot of times, and this is true with a lot of different things, uh, we tend to swing far ends on either side of the spectrum when a lot of times we need to find the balance in the middle. And people don't like the middle anymore. You're either one side or you're the <laughs> other, and there is no more common ground. Yeah, it's either black or white. Like Go ahead. Right just yes, real quick, just uh, these are all amazing points, guys. And But I think one thing that we have to consider is... Um, what would, what would David, like David was a great example, and he often inquired of the Lord, and the root of the question is if I don't like either candidate, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, the goal is here is to what do you want, Lord, as Christians, right? And not what we want. Yeah. Inevitably, yeah. right? So I, it seems basic, and I hope it isn't just, this isn't just an assumed thing, yeah. but David inquired of the Lord when he was in battle, right? Yes. We read that in 1 Samuel and yes. 2 Samuel many times. But are we willing as Christians to inquire of the Lord God, what do you say yeah. about this election and yeah. who you want? And certainly it comes down to those values and we think those things will align biblically, but are we even asking? Mm -hmm. You know, rather than just taking it upon our shoulders of what I like or what appeals to me, uh, we had a conversation earlier about taking up our crosses, right? Yeah. So we've got to lay down what we want for the sake of what God wants. Mm -hmm. yeah. I also think there's a danger too. Is there not of doing what the children of Israel did when they wanted Saul to be their first king? Yeah. Sure. And, and, and God told Samuel, the prophet, who was very disturbed over the matter, he said, well, just back up, Samuel, they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting me, is right. what he said. That's a great point. And they got what they wanted, didn't they? Yeah. Israel got what they wanted. Well, and you can talk to, I could go to Christians in our churches who would say, I have sought the Lord, I'm sure. voting for candidate A, I'm voting yeah. for candidate B, or sure. I'm voting for candidate C or D. Uh, and that's where the, the sticky issue becomes of like, you have people going, well, this is my conscience before the Lord. It has right. been seared in this way. And you go, and this is for true for so many things, you go, huh, <laughs> because that's not mine. And then as the pastor, you have to figure out, okay, so how do we still be family? How do right. we still do yeah. life together exactly. when consciences are so different? But I, I do think that's a good question of, how much have you actually prayed and sought the Lord? I mean, it's convicting to me, yeah, even. Me have I, I haven't yeah. fasted about this year's right. election. I haven't, in the way that I have other major decisions. And I think for me, it probably goes back to what Darwin said. If I'm like, I'm one of 330 million, even living in a swing state, my vote really is, Mike, but you still have to give an answer to God before it. So that's convicting to me, even, brother, of like, man, I don't know that I've actually really sought the Lord. Of course, we've got right. biblical frameworks and stuff, but right. have I really asked the Lord? Well, and I think the, the other issue there too is, okay, if you sought the Lord and he gave you this answer, right. that doesn't mean that you have to impose your will sure. on someone else. Some and that if they come up with a different answer, right. that you're right, they're wrong. And I think we there's a lot of that happening. Yeah. And we could even go to the mask issue. There's a lot of that that has happened with that is, yeah. well, this is a biblical issue for me. Here's the reasons. Was well, a biblical issue. Here's the reasons, and we may oppose each other. Does that mean we're necessarily wrong? No. Does it mean we're right? No. We just have differing opinions. Right. Let, let's hope. Let, let, though, is that God is ultimately in control. Yeah. yeah. And I, even with our votes, I am firm believe that God will put in the position the person that He wants. Romans even, chapter thirteen. Yeah. Even yeah, if absolutely. it's even if it's a Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah. God will ca God when God enters the voting booth, the election is over because he, <laughs> he, he cast the deciding vote. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I want to continue along this vein uh, much more as we, as, we, as we come back, but we're going to take a, a break. Don't go away. We've got more good stuff to come. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. 
You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pasture suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. Okay, we are back and uh, we want to continue the discussion uh, by just going into something that you had mentioned earlier when you were talking about values, voting values. Uh, one of those, of course, being the life of the preborn. Now, the argument is made that if we care about the preborn, we're Christians, why should we not care about those children that came across into America as undocumented and were put in cages and were put in situations where they were snatched away from their parents and the like? Some of those children will not get back to their parents, ever. And how that Christians were not speaking out on that is like, like they would on abortion or like. Right. How, do we, how do we reconcile that? I think the question is, can we be compassionate and still uphold the law? So there, there has to be a legal process we go through, but at the same time, we do need to be compassionate. I think as Christians, we need to recognize that, do we have some immigration laws that need changed? Yeah. Yeah, we do. We need some reform. We need some issues. So how do we do that? They need to be simple. We need to be able to understand them. But how can we be compassionate to those people who are coming in at the same time understand that they are breaking the law? Mm -hmm. So how do we reconcile that? And I think that's a struggle that we have to talk about. Yeah, Ring, you're tired, you're huddled masses, yearning to be free and all of that. Um, yeah, I, I probably would take a, a pretty different approach to most of you. This is where, and this is where I've gotten a uh, pushback from both sides where I tell people my pro-life ethic extends from womb to natural tomb. And so um, detention centers, mass incarceration, these things, uh, capital punishment, I, I feel very comfortable standing against them. Even, even the thing, you know, we talk about always upholding the law. Well, right now, abortion is the law of the land and Christians are actively trying to change that. And I have not met one Christian group actively trying to change uh, immigration laws. Right? Is, and so we, is, we take that approach no, out of like, well, hey, it's the law. It's like, is what, so is abortion. Isn't that what the, the new Supreme Court nominee is all about? Uh, Depends on who you ask. And, as some would call it stacking the decks at the, in the US, U.S. Supreme Court. Right. But I think the, the issue when it comes to immigration is um, where is the, the justice of the law? But here's the thing that uh, we've had detention centers at the border for a long time, and we have not done Republican or Democrat done a service to these people and we've used it as a political football to kick back and forth mm -hmm. and these are real lives that are affected under President Obama under President Bush under President Clinton these are real lives that are affected and it started under President Reagan when we secured the border people used to come back and forth work work in the fields go back to their homes right. we secured the border and they couldn't leave so people just started to stay mm -hmm. these are factual mm -hmm. things people yeah. can check out but the thing that's frustrating is I don't think people want to change the law because I think it works as a really good political football every four years <laughs> and it works as a sledgehammer against your guy or a, a pro against mm -hmm. my guy. Yeah. And that's where as Christians we have to look and say, okay, so what do we do about children sitting in detention centers who under certainly that the, the might have been parents that brought them there, but they're still sitting there. Yeah. Right. And it's these a hard conversation. These are innocent kids. Yeah. yeah. These are innocent yeah. kids. Yeah. Well, you know what? I go. Let, let's go back to the days of Billy Graham. Mm. Whether it was a Republican or a Democrat in the White House, that man went in with the gospel. He did not go in with a political agenda. He did not go in trying to show himself to be better than or bigger than he was because he was identifying with going in the White House all the time. He went in with the gospel. Do we see nowadays some instances where some ministers are jockeying for political position <laughs> by identifying with one party or another or with one candidate or another? Uh, is it, is, has it become politicized rather than dealing with the gospel? There's a senator running, I believe, in Georgia, and he goes by reverend. or He's running for election, and it's mm -hmm. reverend so-and-so running on the... And it's like, if you identify yourself as the Democratic nominee running as reverend, you're, you're making a statement there because we all could go by, I mean, ordination and stuff. Yeah, we could yeah. all, a lot of us could go by reverend and that kind of thing. But when you say that, you know, you're making a statement. So there mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. people that are doing that of saying, I'm a reverend running for office. So uh -huh. I definitely think it happens. Okay. I think you mentioned Billy Graham. And the one thing that I love about Billy Graham is he, he so exemplified Jesus. Mm -hmm. and Jesus was always able to bring the truth 
but he did it in love. Amen. He yeah. has always had that ability. Yeah. And so I feel challenged even in the midst of this conversation as, as a Christian, what are we doing? What is the truth? Well, I think we can all agree abortion is wrong mm -hmm. right. as Christians, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Yes, yes. The things that are happening to these children that we're talking about, that's wrong. At some point, we've got to stand up, right? We've got to stand up mm -hmm. as Christians. So what, we, what we're identifying is we did do something wrong, right? As Christians, we didn't stand up. That was yeah. your comment or yeah. your question yeah. at the beginning. Same we thing with prayer up. being taken out of the schools. Right. Yeah. We didn't we've got we to didn't be able to, just like Jesus, stand up and tell the truth in love, even in the midst of our congregations or people. You know, and we're going to get backlash. It's okay. the, when you bring the truth, we're going to get backlash. If you want to upset your church, get up and say, uh, abortion's wrong. You're going to have some people upset. Yeah. And then get up and say, I think what we're doing at the border is wrong. You're going to get a whole different group upset. And then you start talking about maybe if you really want to get, add a little something on top, talk about the death penalty and yeah. people we know we've killed that are innocent. I mean, proven after the fact yeah. by DNA evidence yep. Yep. to have been innocent that the state took their life. Yeah. We would yeah. all call that yeah. sin. Yeah. Yeah. So throw that out there and see the comment cards come in after the but service. I'm sure that you, one thing that you would say is that you, you didn't sign up to tell the truth because it was popular, Amen. right? You, right. You, you didn't. And so that's and where I, just making right. sure you're telling your folks yeah. the whole truth. And again, if you've, if you've made yourself and everyone you stepped on a few toes, Christ stepped on some toes, yeah. especially when he was in the temple. Right. Yeah, he certainly did. Yeah. When he was in the temple is when folks got most upset oh, at him yeah. because they were all claiming to have a good knowledge of that truth. And that's where we have to come humbly and present it. Uh, right. you, and you know you're addressing another uh, question that we got in by viewers. Um, what were Jesus' views uh, on responding to a, tyran a tyrannical government? You certainly have. You know? Right. And... We certainly have them, yeah. And he certainly had one in Rome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, for sure. And, you know, he, he had choice words to say. Mm -hmm. he, he didn't bite his tongue. Um, and when we look at president after president after president, like, say, within our mm -hmm. lifetime, gentlemen, has, has the church been standing up in a consistent manner for right or wrong? No. And we give, no. give you, give you no. an example. Let's take our current president up for re-election. Many Christians like the fact that he changed and brought the embassy from Tel Aviv sure. to Jerusalem. Good thing for Israel and, and the support of Israel. But then there are other things that are even more questionable that he has, he has done that have been considered sin. Uh, with Obama, the situation with Ar Iran when he was president. On the other hand, there was his support of um, homosexuality, his support of abortion that was uh, anti-Christian. It seemed that in many cases that ministers were willing to stand up and say what was wrong in one regime, one government, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. but take a back seat to some of the wrong things that are taking place in another administration simply because of some other good things they may be doing. We have churches literally being torn apart right now. Denominations are literally being torn apart yeah. right now by these discussions. Um, now, I don't even say discussions. It's just it's gotten to the point where they are literally falling apart and hemorrhaging at the seams. Mm -hmm. And part of it is is you know not just so much the social issue, but issues, but let's talk about the spiritual and, and the doctrinal issues. We don't even agree on if Mary was a virgin or not. Or, you know, did Jesus really raise from the dead? Yeah, we got pastors yeah. in the pulpits and denominations that don't even teach that. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and so you want to know why the church has become so impotent? Uh, I, did a, I did a research paper for Weinbrenner Seminary, and in it I found there are 65,000 denominations in the world. Wow. 65,000, according to the Catholic encyclopedia, mm -hmm. 65,000 denominations that think, 65,000 denominations that have the lock on the truth, <laughs> where they know it's the truth, and this is the way it is. We can't even agree on that. And why are we impotent? Because of that. Instead of just holding to what we're the Bible willing. says. You mean, he, I, it's I, like John I, 17. It's John, it's John 17, where Jesus prayed and said, Father, make them one yeah, yeah. as we are one. <laughs> yeah. It hasn't happened yet. Yeah. I think we too, we have a lot of people who um, wear Christianity as a badge or associate with Christianity, but they're not really a Christ follower. The issue, well, I go to church. I show up on Sunday once a month. It's a religion. I put in, yeah. And it's, you know, I put in my time. 
but it doesn't change me from the inside out. It hasn't changed who mm -hmm. I am. It mm -hmm. doesn't affect uh, all my identity. When, when you're talking about being a disciple, when Christ called his disciples, it changed everything about them. Right. They changed their, their, their life completely went upside down. And so we don't do that anymore. And Christ said, hey, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. Yes. And too many times we have Christians who are like, well, I'm a Christian. Well, I don't want to offend you. I'm a, well, I don't want to make anybody mad. If you're going to follow Christ, people are not going to like what you have to say sometimes. I prayed the prayer. Yeah. I prayed the prayer, therefore. Mm -hmm. Notice what Mark chapter 1 says. Uh -huh. the, the very first sermon that is found that Jesus preached in Mark chapter 1. The time has come. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe. Repent means I am a sinner and yeah, I'm turning yeah, from yeah. it. Believe that Jesus is the Christ and, and believe the good news. And then he says, come, follow me. Right. Those four things are so important that we don't preach anymore. We preach, pray the prayer, you're okay. Forget about repentance right? Hmm. because we don't want you to be upset. Right. Forget about repentance. Forget about the good news. Forget about Jesus is the only way. Forget about all that. But as long as you prayed the prayer, hey, you're okay. Continue to do whatever you want. There's going to be a lot of people in hell that prayed the right. prayer. You, yeah. you, it's not just praying the prayer. The prayer has to change you. That's, that's that idea. God loves you the way you are, but he loves you too much to keep you that way. That's right. And so when you pray <laughs> that prayer, it, that means when you go back, you have to change your world. Yeah. Or that prayer didn't mean anything. Well, that Romans 12, verses 1 and 2 speak to that, you know, about making your body a sacrifice mm -hmm. and then having a changed, reformed mind. Right. You know, I love the way you phrase it. Christ loves you the way you are, but when you come to him, he's going to change it. He loves you too much to let you stay the same way. These come, things come. aren't popular no. either. No, no, the, no. This no, discussion no. isn't popular right now, so the viewers probably just went down. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a true story. This is not popular, but at the end of the day, are we about, and I'm a pastor, right? So I can say this because I am included in this, what I'm about yeah. to say, but are we about building our churches or are we about building the kingdom of God? Right. right. Mm. And those things, he said about, that what came from about, Jesus, right from the mouth of Jesus. It's in red, I think. I saw it. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's red in large print for old guys like right. me. When you talk about building the churches versus building the kingdom of God, about that much difference between the two. Well, that, and that, all the stuff that goes on with being a pastor and paying the bills and stuff. Yeah. So how do we get people in the seats and the offerings? It, the focus has shifted yeah, right. from that instead of building the kingdom where mm -hmm. our trust is in the Lord for everything that happens in of the we got about a minute left. You got to make it but, quick. But let me let me just throw this out here because I know people are listening to this, and it's coming from my heart. It's not out of anger. But how many people who are listening to this are living in sin, are living with their boyfriend or girlfriend, are involved in sex, are involved in all types of stuff, but they've prayed the prayer and Jesus, I, I literally have had ladies come up to me as I know this is what God wants because mm -hmm. I'm I, you know, I'm so glad that God wants me to live with my boyfriend. Right. No. Okay. Repent. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We're all out of time. Very well said. You know, let me just say to our audience, uh, we're going to continue this discuss discussion next week with the same panel. So, you know, if you couldn't get your licks in this time, you can get them in next time. So come back and be with us again next week. Same time, same station. I'm Bill Harris. We'll see you then. Bye bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.